Okay, let's talk a little bit about restricting things by IP address. Security is always going to be a big thing. So the example that I give is, let's say you have an intranet that has pricing information and the employee handbook and, and that kind of stuff, and you really don't need people out in the world seeing it, but it'd be nice to have it on a web server. So what you can do is say, okay, our local IP range is the 10 network. It's a private IP range. So let's say you want to say, um, only if you're from the 10 network can you access this page. Let's see. I have, let's see what kind of mess I've got here. I've got IIS installed. I went through the install process, and if we look at roles, I did add that one extra thing. We'll look at it after it's already been installed. If you've already installed it, you can go back through role services, um, web server. Let's see what parts of the web server have been installed. Um, there. It's under security that, that we're looking for this. Security. IP and domain restriction isn't, isn't always on by default, but that's what we want to do. We want to restrict by IP address. And it's on, it's installed. So let's go ahead and check it just outright. I've made me a little bitty index.html. So from this machine, I can hit this in two different ways. And I'll come back to this a little bit later. The IP address of the server is 128. I'm going to write that down because I'll forget it. So the server is 128. So I can hit this either by saying 192.168.254.128. Yay! Or I can say 127.0.0.1. And 127 dot anything actually is it's, it's called the loopback. It means this machine. I'm hitting my own machine. So there's that. Now I've got a couple more VMs. Here's a Windows 7. And the screensaver kicked on right as I got to it. Then I also have a CentOS image. And the CentOS is on the 255 network. I made it 255.111. And I will, let's see, my little thing's in the way. There's Firefox. I'll go back to my Windows. Let's see what its IP address is. Its IP is 133. Okay. Start up that browser. I'm just hopping back between these two things just to show. 192.168.254.128. There it is. It can hit it. This one. Everything's a little slow right now. 192.168.254.128. That works much better with the num lock on. 192.168.254.128. Much better. That's my default page. Everybody can access it. I've got a, a cute little website and it runs. Yay. Okay. Let's restrict it. And we're restricting it at the IIS level. Now we can take just a second and talk about defense in depth. Um, Defense in depth, I usually give the analogy of a fire base in Vietnam, since so many of us are like me and watch lots and lots of Vietnam and war movies. If you had a, a base of some sort and wanted to protect it, you'd have a base with some guys with guns around that, and then a little bit further out, some more guys with some more guns, and then after that, some fences, and then after that, something else, because you want to know if the bad guys are coming at you. So if you see the guys that are way out there, your, your recon, the guys that are looking, if you see them getting shot at, you have time to respond. Uh, you have more layers of defense. You have lots of more people shooting at them from different places. There's my analogy of defense in depth. So this server can protect and do IP restrictions in several different places as well. It can do it here. It can also do it at the firewall. And in terms of just good thinking about security, I always take the belt and suspenders approach, block it in both places. The only caveat to that is you have to remember that you have blocked it in more than one place. So anyway, let's block it, restrict it by IP range, just using Windows or 
RS itself. Um, RS tools and sites, default website. Okay, what we gained when we added that little thing in the roles, the IP and domain name restrictions, it added this one little icon. So if we click on that, we can say, let's do this first, um, edit feature settings. What's the default? You can work security from two different ways. You could say, okay, block everything and only let this guy and this guy and this guy and these other guys through. Or you can say, what it's got right here, allow everybody through and then just block a couple. So we're going to say deny. Access for unspecified clients. Okay, that means if you're not on the list, you're not getting in. And that's the way that most good filters work. If you're not specified, you don't get in. So I'm going to add an allow entry. And I'm going to specify an IP address, 192.168.254.133. I think that was the Windows 7 machine. All right, so right now, that should be the only guy that gets in. Let's try it and see. Um, I'm going to say refresh, and it worked. And I actually said control refresh, so it should be okay. And just to reiterate to myself, that was 133. So it makes sense that it was allowed because it's on the list. Right there's my list. It's just that one guy. Now, my Linux machine, he should not be allowed to get in because his IP address is 255.111. So if I say control and reload, blah, it says, no, you don't get in. So any other IP that I use, I'll even use my, um, here's my host machine, 192.168.254.128. Blah, he's denied. And that's some other machine on the 254 network. So the only one that gets in is the one that we specified. So that's cool. Now we can do it by range as well. We can say, I'm going to take this back out. I'm going to say remove. Yes, I want to remove him. And I'm going to say add an allow entry. I'm going to give it a range. 192.168.255.0 with a mask of 192.168.255.0. That don't look like a mask to me. 255.255.255.0. That means, just to give you the quick and dirty, that means these first three bytes have to be the same. That means it has to be 192.168.255 in order to hit it. If your address is 192.168.254, you don't hit it. So I'm going to say OK. And notice I didn't have to restart it or anything. Now if I say refresh, this machine is a 254.133, so it doesn't get access. But my Linux box is a 255.111. He should get access. Yay! And even if we go back to this guy, this machine is on a 254. It should still be denied. But, let's see. I'll pause the video. What I'm going to do is to change the IP address on this guy right here to something on the 255 network. And I'll do that real quick. Okay, here's what I've done. I've put this on the 255 network, and its subnet mask is 254. And what that does is that allows us to put the 254 and the 255 network together. If that goes over your head, don't freak out. That's more of a, a networking sort of thing. The long and short of it is I changed its IP address and now it is on the 255 network, which means I should be able to do, should be able to get that. There we go, in my default page. So now that it's on the right network, it can access it. That's an example of if you were on, we could have said 192.168.0.0 .0 .0 with a 255, 255.0.0, 0 .0, and that would have meant you had to be local. You had to be on the 192.168 network. That would have done the, the intranet thing. Okay, so that part of it's not too bad. Um, just for giggles, let's see if we can play the firewall some. Okay, I had to tinker with this just a little bit to get it to do what I wanted. Um, right now, I'm going to, let's just go back just for a second to see what I did. 
right now the rights are applied at the IIS level, right? Okay, so I'm going to open IIS back up again. I'm going to say remove that entry and edit feature settings and go back to access for unspecified hosts, allow. So that effectively opens up, opens the gate wide open. So now if I say 192, 168, 254, 128, I'm good. And on this one, 128, I'm good. And my host should be good. So we're going to say it's wide open again. Now we're going to block it some other place. I'm going to say Control Panel, Windows Firewall, and Change Settings. Now I'm going to block it at the firewall. Right now, the firewall is on, but there's a hole poked for HTTP. So port 80 is allowed through. But the problem with this one, if I use the default one, it's open for everybody and there wasn't a way to change it. So I'm going to uncheck that and I'm going to add a port. And I'm going to say www.filtered. Um, it's still port number 80. It's still TCP, but now I have the option of change scope. And I'm going to build a custom list of 192.168.254.0 slash 24. Now, if you say 255, 255, 255, 255 in binary is eight ones. So three times eight is 24. Again, just go with me on this. So anything that starts off 192.168.254 should be allowed through. WWW filtered. Apply and OK. So now I'm filtering at the firewall. And let's see. This IP address was, I've lost it, CMD. This is 255. So if I refresh, it's sitting there timing out. Now a firewall can do can block stuff in two different ways. I'll pause here for just a second. It can block with a reject, which immediately tells the client, boom, you're being rejected. Or it can block with a drop, just not responding. Kind of like my three-year-old. She can scream no, which is the reject, or she can continue watching TV and ignore me, which would be a drop. All right, th uh, this one is also on the 255 network. there. When I did shift and reload, it's sitting there trying to connect and it can't do it. But if I bring in, this one is on the 254 network, shift and reload, and it's doing just fine. So we've done the same thing, but we've done it in two different places. Okay. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention briefly was in both places, you can... Notice I unchecked that one to make it work. Uh 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 uh. Where'd it go? Change scope. I don't see it on there. Let's go back to IS. I know it's there. You can block stuff by the name of your network. Say block anything that comes from example.net. You can do that, but, and it can be handy. But as a trade-off, it's going to be a lot slower. Because every time that a, a computer hits your, it hits your web server, your web server says, it's got the packet, and it says, oh, I'm being hit from 192.168.253.something. It doesn't have a network name. So to find the network name, it has to do a reverse DNS lookup. So every time every time it hits it, it has to look it back up to say, okay, what network is he a part of? Oh, he's part of the Fred network. He's okay. Let him in. So that lookup adds time. So depending on what your web server is doing, it may not be a good idea. It may be a, a convenient thing, but not such a good idea. Let's say add allow. You can say range. Where was it? Enable domain name restrictions. We can click on that. And this is, is basically that warning. Um, requires a DNS reverse lookup. A very expensive operation. I like how it puts that. So are you sure you want to do it? And I said, yeah. So now you get this one, a domain name. So it can be done. The other last thing that I wanted to cover really quick was, let's knock down the firewall again. 
change settings exceptions I'll put back the old one and I'm going to say by default I want you to block and I'm going to uh, allow one IP address 192.168.254.133 that should be my Windows machine so I have access to exactly one machine that 133 machine okay um, yeah and it is denied so let's go to this machine it should work Doot, 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 doot. Let's go over to the this machine. It's waiting. It looks like the 254 thing is still there. There, I have now managed to block everything. I changed the IP of that machine. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not the same one anymore. Let me change its IP back real quick. This is the problem. This Windows machine is now 255.112, where before it was 254.113. I'm going to switch it back. Okay, I turned turned it back to DHCP and it did pick back up the same address. It's now 254.133, which means that should work. Yay, I finally got there. Okay, if I allow that one machine to work, this is my server. This is where IIS is, and I bring up the browser. I should be able to say 192.168.254.128. That's me, right? It's forbidden. It is forbidden. How about if I do this, 127.0.0.1? That's forbidden, which that seems a little bit counterintuitive to us to say, why can't the VM, why can't it hit itself? Well, we told it not to. We said right here for unspecified deny, get rid of that. And here is the complete list of everything that you are to allow, just this IP address. So let's see if we can add, add and allow entry. The one we need to add is ourselves, 127.0.1. So now, if I do, bloop, it works. Now, try this now, 254.128, shift refresh. It's still blocked because I'm hitting it by its IP, which is a little bit weird. Let's see if I can make this work. Let's take out 127, remove, yes, and allow entry. 192.168.254.128 because that is this machine's IP address. Now if I hit it this way, I get in. But if I hit it through 127.0.0.1, shift, refresh, I don't get in. Because it's, the, the reason is it's itself. So the best thing to do, just uh, the long and short of it, put throw them both in there. Definitely throw in um, 127. It'd be kind of funky to refer to yourself by your own IP address, but it is possible. So these two, pretty much any time, are going to need to be there so that you can hit your own web server. All right, that's blocking by IPs.